This is the story of the Cervelo Test Team's first pro cycling season. Of the little company that could, risking it to start the team that can. But more than that, it's the age-old tale of underdogs rising against all odds. Like a lone rider attacking the peloton in a bid to cross the finish line first. You're not going to see in-race footage or helicopter shots. But what I am going to show you is what it's like to build and be part of a pro team. My name is Joseph. I started working in the Cervelo warehouse about a year ago. Now I'm going on the road with my two pals to get behind the scenes with the Cervelo test team. Sure, this is about professional cyclists, but the courageous human beings, not the media legends. But it's also the story of the mechanics, of sports directors, engineers, and the team manager of young up-and-comers trying to make it in the big leagues, and champions looking to savor the moment again. Toronto is home to Cervelo. In little over a dozen years, Cervelo has gone from a two-man operation working out of a bedroom to employing 80 people and competing across the globe. They are known for producing some of the most coveted racing bikes in the world with a focus on innovation and performance. Behind Cervelo are two men who met at McGill University in Montreal, Gerard Vrooman and Phil White. I'd send a letter to uh, Johnny Bugno saying that I could uh, probably make him faster with some positioning uh, work that I'd done already. Gerard was doing this project and, and he said, hey, do you want to give me a hand for the summer? And I had to have anything to do, really. So I said, yeah, sure, we'll do this, have some fun. So we built this time trial bike for, uh, for Buño eventually. The Baraki. Well, the Baraki is a two-man time trial. So we figured if we make the bike so aerodynamic that it's like riding with two people, hence the Baraki. His bike sponsor, of course, was not too thrilled about the idea of uh, him using another bike. So that didn't really go anywhere. But um, a lot of other people who saw the bike were excited about it and interested in it and asked where they could buy it. So Phil and I thought, uh, you know, maybe there's uh, a market for this. In Montreal, it's pretty cheap to live in. So you add 50 cent bread and 50 cent noodles along to, uh, you know, a cheap rent. You can live for pretty much nothing. What sacrifices did you make in the early days? None. It took time, hard work, and a little luck. But in 2002, Cervelo landed a deal sponsoring a new professional team, CSC. We started with them when they were 14th in the world, and uh, we were just this tiny little North American company that no one had heard of. And both of us have ridden to be arguably top of the world. CSC won many big races on Cervelo's, but the success of the team made them attractive to bike companies with deeper pockets. I applaud them for developing their team to be number one in the world and uh, for being able to command that sort of money from sponsors. But, you know, we're still a small company compared to the big guys, and we don't have that amount of money. And if we do have that amount of money, it's far better spent on developing products that are gonna help our customers. Cervelo is the first bike manufacturer to start their own top-level pro cycling team in decades. A lot of our partners in the bike industry had similar feelings to us, and they also were feeling that they didn't get what they needed out of traditional cycling teams, so they were very excited to come on board with this project. Ironically, the split came during both CSC's and Cervelo's greatest victory, Carlos Sastra's win at the 2008 Tour de France. Shortly afterwards, Sastra left CSC for the Cervelo test team. Two days after the tour, I, uh, I met him uh, at a criterium in the Netherlands and explained for 20 minutes uh, what uh, project we had in mind, and he said, uh, okay, I'm in. This is a Cervelo test team, you know? and for me, every single race is a test. Um, I'm happy to be in this team because I can do many tests, you know? <laughs> as much as I wish for be ready when I have to be ready. You know? Joining Carlos is Norwegian Tour Husoft, winner of the green jersey and multiple stages at the Tour de France. 
So I think that was important for many, many riders who, who saw rumors that Sasta have signed on this team. Then they believe, okay, if Carl Sasta is there, the last year's Tour de France winner, I can be there. Putting a team together, especially under such short notice, requires a tremendous amount of work. Thankfully, Phil and Gerard knew someone who could do the job. Team manager, Thomas Campana. We talked to him about it. Initially, he thought it was an extremely bad idea. Well, simply better not to do it. Yeah, men's cycling is a different world. We, our, our history is actually uh, running a women's team. Uh, we did it, uh, I think, uh, quite successful in the last four years. Campana previously ran the very successful women's team, Cervelo Life Force, which has now become an integral part of the test team. We kept talking and eventually he uh, he changed his mind a little bit and so we, uh, we started working on it. The fact that he's been able to put that together in just a couple months uh, speaks volumes to how effective he is. In the second week of January, the team gathers in southern Portugal for the first training camp. Everyone is here, including all of the supporting staff and sponsors. This is also where they introduce the team to the world. Gerard was on the phone, he was in, at the Tour de France, and he said just one sentence, Thomas, we are doing that team. And from that moment on, uh, it was clear that my life would change and the, the life of many other people. It used to be very normal in the, the great years of cycling, the 1940s, the 1950s, with Fausto Coppi and Boubin, all those guys. Of course, they were all uh, originally coming from teams uh, supported uh, by the bike industry. And we think it's, uh, it's time that that happens again. The next morning, it's back to business. The team is here to get miles in the legs and will do so under the watchful eyes of team directors, including Jean-Paul Van Poppel and Jan Zemka. They come here, we have 14 days. We have, to, we have to leave the individual trainers out and we say we're just here for basic training. So it's a reason that we are riding with every rider. 25 we are going out for training. And yeah, that's also kind of uh, team building here. Also the, the only time in the whole season where the complete team is together. For a small company such as Cervelo, the stakes are high and the investment more than substantial. In what is shaping up to be one of the most exciting pro cycling seasons in years, it's going to be an uphill battle. That suits us fine. We've been underestimating the Cervelo for 13 years and, you know, it's, uh, we've been doing okay in that uh, position, so. Thank you.